I'm not a fan of Windows 11, but I must use Windows 11 as both my hobbies and my professional workplace demand it. Most people must be online to use the operating system and then they'll end up downloading some updates that took way too long. The Windows installation outsmarted Elon Musk of all people. There's a way to bypass the online requirement that is so essential. The PC store that I regularly went to trained their employees how to bypass it. I'm not joking. Why the hell is the offline installation process Process, hidden behind a command prompt. That's the reason why I hate Windows 11. Microsoft buried everything that's good in it among piles of junk. Thankfully, we can remove most of these junks, but most people won't remove them. You should, but Microsoft doesn't expect you to. They just expect you to take whatever junk they gave you by default. This is precisely why I made the Windows 11 guide back in August 2023. Not even a year in, and Microsoft kept giving us more junk. New junk, new guide. Oh wait, I overstepped a bit. That's the part where you get to install Windows 11. There's one thing that you need to pass before you even install this resource hog of an operating system. Let's talk about Windows 11's TPM requirements. Again, Windows 11 requires processors with TPM 2.0. To put it simply, anything above a decade ago. Oh wait, never mind. You can bypass the TPM requirements with a couple of registry tweaks while you're installing Windows, or you use Rufus to create a Windows 11 installation that doesn't suck third pissing monkey out of you. Why does Windows 11 need TPM anyway? Security, basically. Here's the problem, Microsoft. Most people are broke. They do not have the money nor the time to upgrade their PCs, laptops, or their operating systems. There are businesses here that still use Windows 7. You know what's funny? Windows 11 Enterprise LTSC Edition removes TPM requirements. The one thing that most consumers should have, but you're not a big enterprise. You're some broke-ass loser. Eat me. Microsoft wants you to upgrade your CPU for Windows 11. I think you should upgrade other parts before the CPU for Windows 11. First off, it's the storage. Change that old rusty mechanical hard drive and replace it with an SSD. Seriously, this kind of upgrade is magical. And you don't need anything fancy. SSDs are super cheap these days, even the ones made by reputable brands. I highly recommend checking out SSD tier list and making sure that you get the best SSD for the price. And lastly, upgrade your RAM capacity. 8 gigs of RAM is the bare minimum, but it's still not enough for most tasks, considering how much of a resource hog Windows 11 and browsers are these days. Upgrade to 16 gig at least, and 32 gigs if possible. No really, 32 gigs. You'll thank me later. If all that still hogs the PC or laptop, then look up a couple tweaks for Windows 11. If they all still fail, that's when you upgrade your CPU and motherboard if necessary. And we got plenty more tweaks and tech tips for you all. But before we get to all those, this video is brought to you by all these wonderful sponsors. You're all fantastic. If you want to see your names among these legends, then check out the links down below. Just one dollar. And you have supported this channel a lot. Seriously, thank you so much. And now, after bypassing TPM, always online startup, endless freaking updates, and hardware requirements, let's talk about the pre-installed bloatwares. Windows 11 came with a lot of unnecessary apps that you don't need. Let's remove them one by one. Click the Windows logo or press the Windows key on the keyboard and type in program. You should find add or remove program on the very top result. Click that and you'll be taken into this settings menu where you can see the apps that you installed. Uninstall the ones that you don't need by clicking the three dots on the right and clicking uninstall. Doing this will help you save some space and improve performance. You can also change the apps that start with Windows through the task manager by pressing Control shift escape or right click on the taskbar and find the task manager there. This applies to both Windows 10 and 11. Don't let these apps be a hog on your system, wasting hard drive space and wasting startup time. Windows sucks, but that doesn't mean you should suck as well. Here's one Windows 11 tweak I recommend you do as soon as you have a fresh install. Open your Windows Explorer, click View, Show, then click Compact View. There's way too much space in between items here, and that's because it's designed for touch screen, so you can press them easier. You're not on a touch screen, on most Windows at least. If you're watching this on a smartphone, you are, but most people are not using touch screens on Windows, so just turn on Compact View for your viewing experience. Windows 11 has fancy animations and visual effects, but I'm more of a functionality guy than looks guy, which is why my wallpaper is pitch black and I disabled the animations and visual effects. If you want to do so, just search for animation on the startup menu or search bar and you will find animation effects. In there, you can disable the transparency effects and animation effects of Windows 11 to improve the performance and make your windows feel snappier. Alternatively, you can find more advanced options by right-clicking on this PC 
click properties, select advanced system settings, and click the settings button on the performance section. This is the tweak that I use. You can follow it if you like, and you'll see your windows feeling much snappier than last time. Here's another Windows 11 tip. If you press the Windows key and type whatever, you will be searching for what you just type. You don't need the search icon. You can just remove them by right clicking on the taskbar, go to taskbar settings, then hide the search button. It's great if I want to run programs. I don't need the shortcut, I just press the Windows key, type the program, and press enter. Also, Windows Search will also search for results online, which will waste system resources. Using WinEra Tweaker, you can disable the online search results and only let your computer search stuff locally. It also has other tweaks that I recommend you go check out, including disabling ads. So definitely check that one out. Also, if you think Windows Search is slow for searching files, check out Everything by Void Tools. I highly recommend this program. It'll let you search literally everything inside your PC in an instant. Go check out this software. I highly recommend it. If you're using Windows, you should get this software, WinEra Tweaker. This software has a plethora of fixes and all sorts of tweaks. Here are the tweaks that I use with WinEra Tweaker. Windows 11 has loads of fixes that you can pick, but classic full context menu is essential in my opinion. I reduced the window border paddings to zero. I disabled the ads and unwanted apps from everywhere. Keep thumbnail cache if you don't want Windows to keep reloading the cache. It'll eat up some space on your drive though, so keep that in mind. Menu show delay should be turned all the way to one. The less delay, the better. I disabled web search. I don't need the OS to search things on the web. Taskbar thumbnails, I reduced the thumbnail group to zero so that the thumbnail looks like this rather than a series of thumbnails. I also made the delay to be one millisecond so the taskbar thumbnail shows instantly. Disable telemetry so that you don't send information to Microsoft and waste system resources and many more. Check out Winero Tweaker. I personally don't mind Windows 11's rounded corners, but then I went back to the sharp corners and I realized I prefer the sharp corners. With this little tweak that you can get from GitHub, you can turn your Windows 11 rounded corners to sharp corners like on Windows 10. Download the software from GitHub by clicking the latest version on the releases section and click the exe file there. Don't worry, it's perfectly safe. Once you download that, all you have to do is to run the program and boom, rounded corners gone. But wait, my Windows 11 just got updated and I can't restore the rounded corners back. No worries, go to C, Windows, System32, and delete UWDM files that end in Bach. Alternatively, use this neat software called Everything by Void Tools that lets you search everything on your PC super fast and look up UWDM back. Delete those two files, run the software again, and your rounded corners are shop once again. If you want a little more customization on your Windows 11, I highly recommend this program called Windhawk. Windhawk is an all-in-one Windows customization program that lets you to customize your Windows 11 with all sorts of tweaks or mods. I use two mods. The first one is Taskbar Thumbnail Reorder, which in my opinion, should have been included on Windows 11 to begin with. The second one is Taskbar Volume Control, which allows me to control the volume by simply using the scroll wheel on the taskbar. There are many other cool mods you can apply on your Windows 11, so go check this one out. Oh, one huge warning that I must give to everyone that uses VirtualBox, the virtual machine program. Please add the installation folder of VirtualBox to the program exclusion list on Windhawk. Otherwise, you will find your virtual machine suddenly having issues. I didn't think that these two apps would conflict, but they did, so keep that in mind. By far, the most essential application that I think you guys really need for Windows 11 and 10 is ONO Shut Up 10 Plus Plus. What is it? It's a Windows anti-spying tool. This will not only prevent Microsoft from tracking your butt, but it will also improve performance as you tell Windows to do other stuff that is more important than spying on you. There are lots of options here and you can click on them individually to figure out what each of them means. So you don't have to look it up yourself. The horrific thing about this is that you have to check this periodically after an update. If you tweak your window so that the corners aren't round, then all of a sudden it's round again, you you know that your Windows is updated. That's when you have to check Shut Up 10 Plus Plus again to make sure that they don't change the settings back. Thankfully, there is an option for you to import or export settings, so you can easily go back to the personal settings that you tweaked.
Those are all the Windows tweaks that I personally use, but the general point for Windows 11 is that somewhere beneath all the crap, there is a functional operating system. It's not the greatest, but it's functional and does the job better than a fresh install. Moving on from Windows related stuff, here are a couple more tech tips that you guys might find useful. Did you know that I switched from Google to Bing as my search engine for a couple years now? It all started when a couple years ago, Google kept suspecting that I am a bot because I have VP and none. So they asked me captcha questions that utterly wasted my time. So I switched to Bing. Bing never suspected me of being a robot and I found out it's actually a really good search engine. Unfortunately, the image search is a bit of a hit and miss. So I use Yahoo to search for that. Yes, Yahoo search. I find the image search there better. So I'm not really in tune with Google search being utterly broken and giving insane results. Murder is great and you should do it now. Apparently Google tells you the person who ruined Google is probably Prabhakara Gavan, the former head of ads on Google search by prioritizing profits over user experience. Hey, they said it, not me. Seriously, switch to other search engines now. If you don't like Bing, use any of these. An internet browser is needed for computers in current year, but which browser should you use? If you use Windows, I think Microsoft Edge is fine. No, seriously, hear me out. It's already based on Chrome, so if you install Chrome, you're just gonna waste some space. Not to mention, it has a lot more features than Chrome, including tracking prevention, and you can still install uBlock Origin. Even pirates recommend it. But if you're not comfortable with that, Firefox is a great alternative. There's a reason why it's pre-installed on almost all Linux distros. It's the one browser that focuses on your privacy and security. Brave is fine, but Firefox is good. Don't forget to install uBlock Origin. I also recommend Firefox on your smartphones because it's the one browser with the ability to install uBlock Origin as an ad blocker. Again, get uBlock Origin whatever browser you use. It's a great ad blocker. It keeps yourself safe while browsing the net. I highly recommend it. One thing is for sure, no Opera GX. At least Edge comes pre-installed with Windows. Here are a couple of free and open source programs that I use that I prefer over paid apps. Qubit Torrent is the one torrent client app that I highly recommend if you want to search the seven Cs. GIMP, Inkscape, Krita, and Pinta. They all work better than Photoshop, in my opinion, for different use cases. File Converter is a godsend. I can convert any files to any type with a simple right-click menu. I highly recommend that. Handbrake is when I want to convert videos with more advanced settings. OBS is for streaming and recording desktop or games. Flow Frames is an insane video interpolator, which uses AI to generate frame rate on your videos and make them smoother. Chainer is a great node-based image processing GUI that I use to upscale images. Wiz3 is amazing if you want to see the files that are hogging your hard drive and sort them based on size. And of course, for all the Windows tweakers out there, Winner Tweaker, WinHawk, WinToys, and PowerToys. All great. I highly recommend them. There are many other tweaks, mods, customizations, useful programs, apps, all that good stuff. I can't mention them all, but I can pinpoint where to start. I already recommended Art Piracy Megatread for all the sailors of the seven seas, but I would extend that recommendation to people who use computers in general. Champagne Piracy has plenty of useful resources for pirates and PC users in general. Free Media Hekia yeah is my top resource for all sorts of free media, mostly for pirates. But even if you're not a pirate, there are still extensively useful resources for general PC users. I cannot recommend this enough. I go to this all the time. The Moe Index, Wotaku Moe, and Everything Moe are great resources for all otakus out there. If you like anime, manga, visual novels, light novels, 18 plus content, these are great. Seriously, just explore them and you will find yourself in a vast sea full of great resources that might be useful for you. Even so, as recommended by our piracy megathread, don't forget to have a VPN and ad blockers ready. Let's talk about VPNs. No, this is not a sponsor section. I'll be real with you. I use a paid VPN because Indonesia censors a lot of websites. If you suffer from this, you can use Siphon or Lantern. Both are free proxies that let you access blocked websites. They're not fast, but you can unblock them. For those of you living in third world countries, a VPN is essential, especially if your government is known to be censorious. If you're living in a first world country where you have a lot more freedom, a VPN is essential for pirates sailing the seven seas and downloading all the pirated movies and games and all that. If you don't have a VPN, your ISP will email you about it and will threaten to cut your internet off. If you're not a pirate, a VPN can be useful to fool websites into thinking that you're using a different computer. Otherwise, I don't recommend it, especially when most VPNs have a rather incestuous relationship. 
Which VPN is safe to use? There are many YouTubers and influencers that promote all sorts of VPNs, but which one should you trust with your data? None from the influencers and not the free ones. Instead, I recommend checking our VPNs with a NAS. These Redditors rigorously check and continuously update their VPN recommendations and make sure that the VPN you chose is the one that is trustworthy enough for your data. But that's not all. Look up VPN relationship map and click Click the website that says kumo.io. Look at that relationship map and how incestuous it is. You can search for the VPN you want and find out all their sins and connections. These are the things that these VPN providers don't want to tell you. The topic of VPNs is mired with misinformation, uncertainty, and shadiness. Now that I supplied you with these resources, it's all up to you on which VPN providers you trust protecting your information from the government or the ISPs. Okay, those are all about apps and browsing and internet and all that, but that's all Windows stuff. Are there any other alternatives to Windows 11? Windows 10. No, really, Windows 10. For those of you who are adamant about not using Windows 11, you can still use Windows 10. But hold on, isn't Windows 10 only supported until 2025? Yes. For the consumer version, there is one version that will still receive support until 2032, and that is the Windows 10 IoT Enterprise LTSE 2021. Where can you find this version? Unfortunately, unlike the consumer version of Windows, Microsoft doesn't have a download link for them, or at least not that I know of. You can find the ISO on Internet Archive, or look up Mass GitHub, and you should find it with a little browsing. You would need the ISO version. Once you have the ISO, you need a spare USB to install Windows and Ventoy or Rufus to make that USB bootable to Windows. All you need to do is install Windows 10 on the PC that needs it. Congratulations, you will have Windows 10 that will still survive until 2032. If you are tired of Windows, can Linux be an alternative? The answer is yes, but with a big asterisk. Obviously, Linux is great for programmers, developers, and tinkerers, but who else would benefit from Linux? If you have a computer that is so old that can't handle the latest Windows, sure, get Linux. If your job doesn't require Windows or Mac, or you do most of your work in a browser, Get Linux. If you're comfortable with using free and open source programs that aren't as great as the paid alternative, but still do the job, get Linux. If you want to tinker with your operating system, get Linux. If you are crazy obsessed with privacy and don't want corporations to snoop in your activities, get Linux. Why don't I use Linux? Because I work and play better on Windows. Also, I love to pirate games and programs, and Linux doesn't like pirates of games and programs because they're mostly Windows-based. They are okay with media pirates and ROM pirates, so keep that in mind. Wow, I shared a lot of tech tips, huh? Before I conclude this, if you have any issues with the tech tips I shared, please contact me through email or Twitter X. These are the social media that I am most active on, so keep that in mind. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed these tech tips, then please check out the links down below. Go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more. Don't forget to check out my ABB Show stream channel, link down below. Go subscribe as always. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>